James, you know, uh, uh, the first the first words just I just want to kind of set the tone for all of us that this guy James is not the same guy that you sometimes look at in the scriptures and you find him that you know Peter James and John and you see that them all through the scriptures you know ga gathering together experiencing incredible things with God with the Lord Jesus Christ that's not the same James as this James this particular guy is so interesting guy he is actually you know half brother to one and only one Lord our Lord Jesus Jesus Christ. Imagine that Jesus Christ, you know, did not have any brothers from the same, you know, kind of mother, mother and father, but he had a half brothers and half sisters, and James happened to be one of them, and he became a Christian. He followed the Lord Jesus Christ. He gave it all to the kingdom of God, and he wrote this epistle, an incredible knowledge that he dropped in this epistle. You know, if you ever, you know, uh, don't want to read any book, if you're not a Christian, I recommend you to read at least a book of James. Something beautiful happens. I mean, it's not about, oh, you know, you got to be so spiritual and do this and do that, but it's an incredible knowledge that James, you know, uh, put it together for all of us to learn life, just life. So he writes this epistle, not just for us, but at that time, particularly for a group of people, and then see what the situation where they were in. In book of James chapter 1, verse 1, it says, I'm reading an IV version, uh, it says, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to the 12 tribes scattered among the nations, and greetings. And I love that he did, you know, when he started off his, his letter, he was so convicted that he wants to tell his identity. You know, he's not even telling people, hey, I, I believe I'm a servant of God. Maybe I hope I'm a servant of God. But he was such a bold, you know, person in his understanding or in his belief or in his, in his uh, uh, believing God. He said, a servant of God. He told the people who he was. And he not only said the servant of God, he also said, of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times we get sometimes so intimidated by the crowds or so intimidated by the people, so intimidated by the company, so intimidated by the things that we involve and we're not even bold enough to say who we really are. When sometimes when people ask you like, are you Christian? You even stumble to say, ah, well, I sometimes go to church. Now, if you're a Christian, you ought to be bold enough to say, yes, I am a Christian. It's a good thing to say I'm a Christian. You know what happens? Every time when we confess that we are a Christian in front of the public, Jesus Christ is confessing your name in front of his father. Some Christians give the Lord a hand clap for that because he is your witness and he is giving you that witness in front of his father every time when you say, I am Christian. I believe in Christ. I believe in what Jesus has done for my life. I believe in what he had accomplished for me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because the gospel of Christ is the power of God. It doesn't matter what what people think yeah, one of these days our life will be ending y'all so we might as well do it right we might as well live it right we might as enjoy the life we might as speak out what you believe in your heart and I know that Christian that's here I know that believer that's here that you know you believe that Jesus has saved you and you and I need to be bold enough to confess and declare and let the people know that Christ is the only way Jesus is the only way Jesus is the only one can give a, a salvation to mankind and and that's the gospel that we believe in not only in one church, but every single church in the United States of America. And, and writer says, I'm a servant of God. And I'm servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. And watch the word. He says, to the 12 tribes scattered. Something is not right there. These tribes, they were scattered. Among the nations. So these 12 tribes who believed in one God, now they were scattered. 12 tribes who believed in Jehovah, Jesus, Holy Spirit were scattered. And that tells us the trouble came to them. You know, because they were Christians, the trouble showed up. Just because they believed in Jesus, the trouble showed up. Sometimes when we look at troubles, we immediately come to conclusions, man, why God allowed this trouble in my life? Why I have to go through these things? Why am I facing this challenge, the trial, the trouble that we're in? And no wonder why the writer is talking to them, especially those that are scattered, those that are 
all over the nations. I don't know about you, when I read that letter and it's talking to me because I'm sometimes scattered. I'm not focused. I'm not going, I'm not doing the things that God has called me to do. I'm sometimes scattered. Have you ever had a scattered brains like you're all over the map? You're trying to do something and you end up, you know, giving your focus there, focus here, and then end up not accomplishing everything and accomplishing very little. And it's kind of scattered because the trouble always distracts people. Trouble always puts us in a place where we get confused about ourselves. Trouble always puts in a place where we can't trust ourselves anymore. Trouble will always tell us that trouble is greater than ourselves. Trouble always communicates back to us that, you know, you can't solve me because you don't have that power to resolve me. Trouble will talk back to us if we have not learned to stand by, you know, in front of the trouble and learn how to face the trouble and break through the shells of the trouble and declare God is in you who is greater than the trouble. And I like to say this, God has not designed you or gave you birth or made you who you are to get the trouble by the trouble. But I believe that you have the power to trouble the trouble. You don't have to be afraid of the trouble. Greater is he that's inside of you living right now. And he's screaming and yelling. He's, giving, he's coming out of you saying that I can do all things through you. If you let me allow, let the trouble be troubled by you because you have the power to trouble the trouble. Somebody say amen to the king of kings so the first word that when I look at it and I think about trouble because this the tribes were all over the map and they were struggling they believed in a great message their product was amazing product they had the power of God yet they were scattered how many times we even relate with that situation man I went to school I got education I have money, I can pay my bills, but yet still I'm in trouble. And one thing about trouble, no matter who we are, no matter what part of life we come from, no matter what part of country we come from, every single person will go through trouble. You may not going to go through the same troubles that I went through. We may not going to go through the same troubles that our parents went through, but we will go through our troubles you will have your troubles you will go through your troubles the reason behind that is there is a theology that we need to extract from the scripture so that we can understand why the troubles are designed let me set the tone before we're going to jump into the troubles you know uh, uh, trails that that the lord is not author of troubles he doesn't just design troubles for you to get better. He doesn't just design trouble for you to kind of, you know, become a better person or better Christian. That's not how the Lord works. But the Lord himself said, and James was there when he spoke this scripture. He said, you will have a tribulation in this world, but be of good cheer. I have overcome them. So Jesus is telling us, that the trouble will not go away because you're a Christian. Trouble will not go away because you're smart. Trouble will not go away because you have a money. Trouble will be there, but the good news is be of good cheer. You got to do something against the trouble because I have overcome the trouble and I'm giving you that same power to overcome those troubles that you're facing. And James heard it. Now he's taking the theology, he's writing these scriptures, he's writing this letter to his brethren and he's telling about the trouble that we're all going to go through, not only them but also us. So as I was watching a, a couple that, you know, uh, when, you're, when you're in the middle of the trouble, you, you, kind of, you kind of struggle to understand what's going on in your life. This couple is coming out of this restaurant called Hot Mama Wings. I don't know, it's a, you know, we, we heard of Wing Daddy, but Hot Mama Wings. But, but the young lady, is, she's pregnant. And her husband was next to, you know, her. And she was, she was coming out of the restaurant. She had a great conversation uh, with her husband and her baby. They were having a great, you know, family movement and, and ate their nice wings. And they stepped out of the restaurant. And, and she was smiling. She has a beautiful makeup on her. She looks gorgeous. And she happened to, you know, uh, put her foot on top of this gum. And then as soon as she realized something was under her 
feed our food. And she realized that her uh, something is not comfortable. And she started, you know, changing her countenance. She started using words that are not appropriate. You know, immediately when we're in trouble, we use that words that are immediately burst out of our mouth. Uh, you know, yes word or yeah word. We just, we just, uh, it's so natural for us to like, ah, what is this? And, and when she realized that there's gum underneath her for, uh, under her shoe and she started you know yelling at it and making you know I can't believe this is happening to me and I don't you know blah 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 and the husband next to her sitting standing and just says sweetheart it's gonna be okay sweetheart we, we, we just take care of it we just take care of it but but I want to pause here for a second so we can continue the story that you know when when you see that the gum that that somebody's Spit something and they threw it on the street and you're not even thinking about that ever like you know you just stepped on it and then you don't feel comfortable as soon as you know you stepped on it you you know you have a walk changes right away you started walking funny and you're trying to take that off from your shoe and you're figuring out where do I get a paper towel to clean that junk and all these things are going in you when especially when you're heading to a direction where you you have a meeting or where you have an important meeting or something going on and you struggle to understand the what is the thing is going on underneath it and especially when, when, when you find yourself in there, when the, when the trouble is there, you, you feel uncomfortable. You feel kind of wanted to use words that are not uh, relevant to mankind. And all these things happen. But I want you to also pay attention to for a second if you can. But somebody else chewed that. And now I have to face the consequences of it. Have you ever seen the troubles like that? When people make mistakes... And now, because you're on the way to your destiny, and then you happen to step on their vomit, and now you have to clean your shoe because they vomited it. And all these things happen in our life because you, you go through trouble after trouble, and one trouble is one way, another trouble comes another way. Sometimes you struggle with the, uh, your own struggles in, internally, and you struggle with the financial things in your family. All these things are happens to all of us. But the writer of this book says something so funny and also powerful. He says in verse 2, New King James Version, he says, My brother, now he's telling to the tribes of Israel that were scattered, that were in trouble. And he was telling to that woman that stepped on the chewing gum. He's telling to you and I. He said, My brother, counted all joy, watch the word, when you fall into various troubles or trials. How do you count joy when you're going through a tough season, James? I mean, how is that going to happen? I mean, I'm already in trouble. I'm already facing trouble. How do I count the joy? Think about that. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, like it's, it's kind of, for me, it's like, you know, I don't know how to do it. Do you know how to do it? Like, do you know how it's how to do it but let's look at a few words and then we're going to learn how to do it the counting on joy and why would he say count all joy i mean what is this reason behind this i mean what, what why do you want me to do this why you why you're telling me to do count it all joy but the, the joy is something so powerful y'all because joy is a fruit of the spirit there are nine fruits i mean nine ingredients in one fruit the fruit of spirit is love peace joy long-suffering, temperance, goodness, and all that great things, they're all within us. But sometimes we don't know how to unlock them. So the writer says, when you count some things, eh, the joy is ready to begin to flow through your heart. He's not talking about happiness, right? You know, when you are hot, when, you're not, when you don't have an AC, when somebody turns on a fan, you're happy. When you're thirsty, somebody brings a glass of water, you're happy. But joy is not a happiness. Joy is something different than happiness. Because the word of God says, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Joy of the Lord is my strength. Not joy of the Lord was going to be my strength. Joy of the Lord is my strength. And that strength is what we need when we're in trouble. Psalms 46 says, the Lord will help us during the time of the trouble. He will strengthen us. He will also uphold us. And he will also become a great help when we're in trouble. So the writer says, count it all joy when you fall in diverse temptations or diverse troubles or diverse tests. How do you count it? Think about this. So going back to the story, 
as this woman grumbling and murmuring and throwing words out there. The husband stood next to her. She said, sweetheart, I'll take care of that. Let me clean that up. And as he was doing it, something beautiful he did. He started talking to baby. He said, hey, little guy, mommy is having a bad day, but are you going to make her happy today? Hey, little guy. And he was, he was just provoking a culture of doing blessing her. And then as he was talking to baby, he was not even talking to the mother, but he was just talking to the baby. And, and all of a sudden, her countenance started changing. She started, you know, ignoring the trouble. She started avoiding what is underneath her shoe. She started, she started like a focusing on the baby again. She started having connecting to with her husband again. Great things happened because they started counting. It's something about when you count. You don't count, you know, one and five and three and two. When you count, you count a systematic way, right? When you count one, you're going to count two. You're going to count three. You're going to count four. You're going to count five. So when you count in a systematic way, your thoughts are established in a systematic way. Your emotions are established in a systematic way. And you start processing information systematic way. So when I went to Chick-fil-A recently, the, 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 you know, we ordered uh, uh, of these uh, uh, grilled chicken nuggets, and they're really good, by the way. Ch grilled chicken nuggets with the ranch on it. So I ordered it. I ordered it. I didn't even look at those how many we have. So I drove by, and 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 I came to office and I opened it. And instead of six, there are only five. And I knew my count. I paid for six. I didn't pay for five. I paid for six. Guess what I did? I hopped on my truck back again and went back to the Chick-fil-A. And I told them, hey, I paid for my, my uh, chicken nuggets, six of them for, uh, for six of them, but I only got five of them. And the manager was so generous enough to say, I'll give you another meal. I got total six plus five, you know, nine <laughs> nuggets. But anyway, when, when I was driving back, I was, I was thinking about it. When, when, you, when, your, when your count is not matching with your mind, you start, you start troubled in your heart. Like you, you want to you wanna make sure that count matches with, with what you're believing, what you're saying, what you're paying for it. But every time when I go after that, as soon as they, as soon as I place my order, when I get my, you know, nuggets, I open right there. I don't even drive by the parking lot. I open, I want to make sure I have one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have my six, then I'm good and I'm happy and I'm moving right direction. And the writer says, count it all joy, especially when you're in, when you fall in trouble. Everybody will fall in trouble, but we need to make sure we don't stay in trouble. Because sometimes we will stay in trouble and we expect the trouble to leave. In fact, only God allows us to fall in trouble. You will fall in trouble, but that doesn't mean you have to stay in trouble. We're going to learn to how to pick yourself up from the trouble so that we can move forward in our regular day and regular future, regular life that God has called us to do. And this is what I learned to do it. When I'm in trouble, I use the things that what King David used it. King David used to say that man... That I know how God delivered me from this place to that place. You remember King David was, before he became a king, he was a boy, a shepherd boy. And he was just taking care of a couple sheep. And one day a bear showed up. Another day a lion showed up. And there was a trouble. And there was a trouble to him. Trouble to the sheep. Trouble to everything that he's doing. Trouble to his leadership. Everything he's got. But he did something. He's not sitting back there. Well, I hope God will do something. No, he took a, he took a step of faith and started fighting. So he fought with the bear and he won the battle. He fought with the lion, he won the battle. Now he learned how to conquer the trouble. And now when he came to a bigger trouble, now he's facing a trouble that's bigger than the lion, bigger than the uh, uh, bear. And all the Israelites are afraid of one trouble. The trouble is Goliath. And they're all are afraid of one guy. And here a guy who already learned how to count and his trouble shows up into a battlefield. And this is how he started talking to himself and talking to everybody. Who is this uncircumcised one that is talking about God's army and the God's people? And he comes, you know, he may be coming with the sword. He may be coming with the shield. But he decided to come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. So he was coming with the Lord's name. And he learned to count those blessings, those count his, his perspectives, his understanding. Now he's able to knock the giant down because he learned how to count. 
Somebody say, I, I want to count. Count your blessings. Have you ever counted your blessings? Especially when you're, when you're in the trouble. You just, you just don't know like what to do. Like when, 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 when we're in trouble, trouble speaks volumes to us. Troubles will always trouble us. But when you start learning to say that I have been born of God. When you start learning to say, wait a minute, before I was even was here, God handpicked me for something that I'm doing right now in my life. Because, you know, because of God that I'm able to stand in my past troubles. Because of God, I'm able to stand my present troubles. Because of God, I'm able to stand but tomorrow present. And, and, and when you start meditating, when you start telling God, it is you that saved me when I was a little boy. It's you that saved me when I was going through so and so thing. It's you that saved me when I was facing a challenge. When you start building that, now you start counting all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. We can count the blessings. We can count the experience, we can count what God had done in your life. You can also count what God had done in others' life and start using that as an experience and as using that as an exercise because when you count, joy started beginning to flow through your life. The writer says, when we, when we love the law, the law will produce love towards back to us. And the writer says, when you walk by faith, now faith will manifest in your life. So now when you count something, joy will manifest through your life. When you count what God had done. When we count what God, has, God is doing. So wh why do we have to do all this? Like wh what, is this, what is this all about? And wh wh why, why I have to do uh, Mr. James? And this is where I really feel kind of um, experience that, you know, you probably had it. Like scripture is talking back to you. Have you ever felt that? Sometimes you read the Bible and the Bible now talking back to you. And I... I I, I had that experience right here that when I was reading these scriptures and it kind of, you know, jumped on me. He says, the reason he's telling us to count your blessings or count joy is just because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. So now he changes the game plan. Now the trouble is exist not to trouble you, but the trouble is exist to kind of give you uh, understanding that you're being tested of your faith. To watch and listen to the full sermon, please download our CJC Life app to your mobile device. Also, go to cjclife.com to find more information. Thank you so much for watching that message. Hey, my name is Philip Sundar. I'm pastor of CJC Life Church, located here at 6401 Bendel Road. I really, really thank you so much for taking your time to hear what God had put in our lives to share with you. We exist so that people will know God, find freedom, discover the purpose, and express who you really are. Hey, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, I really want to introduce to you the most wonderful, powerful person that is going to love you like nobody else is going to love you. So if you do not know him, why don't you pray this simple prayer, invite him into your heart by just repeating this prayer and just mean it in your heart. Something beautiful will happen to you right now. Say this prayer and mean it. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I made a bunch of mistakes against you, against me, against everybody else. But today, I confess all my sins and forgive me Come into my heart. I believe that you're my Lord and my Master. In Jesus' name, amen. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Hey, if you're living in San Antonio area, we are located right here, 6401 Bendera Road. Our Sunday services are every Sunday, 9 a.m., 11 a.m., and 1 p.m. And one thing for sure, once you walk in, you're going to experience an amazing worship and word of God. We have powerful kids' ministry and students' ministry and much more. And we are in transition this summer, small groups and 
six week summer small groups and if you want to be part of small groups come to our church and let's get do let's do life together because bible teaches us that do not forsake the assemblies of god yes so please come and join us and let's let's journey together i want to thank you for taking that step and july 22nd one day that is saturday from 9 a.m to 3 p.m we're going to have a serve day i mean in our campus we're going to do haircuts and school supplies backpacks prayer booth medical drive so many great things we're planning and one day to serve the community so if you're close by 6401 bendera road stop by let's have a let's serve the community or if you want us to serve you come to that event and something beautiful will happen to you and your family as well i want to remind you guys that the apostle paul reminds us colossians chapter one christ is in you the hope of glory god bless you hope to see you next week